Hello legends. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a production ready NAN workflow and then convert it to custom code. So production ready means that your workflow is active, it's plugged into the internet and it can run 24 seven. Now my goal for this video is not to convert you from NAN to code, rather it's to upskill you technically. So if you ever run into any roadblocks or any issues in NAN, where you just think, ah, oh, I wish X was possible, or I wish that I could do Y. Most likely that's gonna be accomplished by writing a custom script. So in this video, I just wanna give you a really simple start to finish process of how you can unblock yourself. So let's start by going to a blank NAN canvas, and let's bring a webhook into our workflow. So as we know, a webhook is a trigger which receives some outside event. Uh, it typically receives a packet of data, like a packet of information. And it wakes up the workflow and then inside the workflow we you know put some llm steps we might put some data processing to get this data and then change it into whatever we need and then on the output for this workflow we use a respond to webhook node but you might have an ai agent taking steps you might directly integrate with the third party nodes like a slack node to put an update a click up node to add a task and that's the high level concept of a workflow uh, for now i just want to test out that i can contact this workflow from external source so all I'm gonna be doing is not putting anything in between this workflow. I'm just gonna be using a respond to webhook. So I'm just getting some information into here and then just responding back to that information over here. Let's configure this to actually work. So I'm just gonna to go to a post request. I'm gonna go respond using the webhook node and let's go into this webhook node Let's set it up. I want my response over here to be a JSON and I wanna have response as my key and a value is just gonna be this is a response. Now, um, I'm gonna be going back into here. Let's take the test URL. Test is just for local testing. It's not actually uh, live on the internet. It's not activated. And I'm gonna go execute workflow. And I'm just gonna open up a tool called Cursor. So Cursor is like NAN, but for code. So it's an AI coding tool. Uh, and this is the first AI coding tool that I'm showing you. This is used locally on your computer. And then later on, I'm gonna be showing you a tool called Replit. Uh, this is also an AI coding tool, but the main difference between this and Cursor is that Replit lets you push your code online. So if we wanna make our code active, just like when we activate our NAN workflows, we can do that in Replit. So now I'm just gonna ask the AI assistant to write me a post request to my NAN webhook um, to send a message saying hello, and I've just given it my webhook address. So I've gotten that webhook address from over here. I've just copied this, and since it's a post request, I just made sure to match that with my AI assistant. Let's hit run. And now uh, this assistant is gonna give us the instructions and the script to actually do that. So the first thing it's telling us to do is to actually install the Axios library. So Axios is used to make API calls. You can think of this, you, imagine you have a kitchen and you wanna bake a cake. Uh, you might need an, uh, an oven in that kitchen in order to bake that cake. So Axios is like extra appliances for your kitchen in order to run some different scripts and recipes. And this here is our script, which I'm gonna be copying over here. I'm just gonna call this script.js. So you can imagine this is that recipe that we wanna run. And now that we have this Axios thing installed, we can actually run this script. So let's look at this over here. We've got the webhook URL that's going to our test webhook. We have our message, awesome. Over in NAN, let's turn this workflow on and back in cursor. I'm just gonna write node script. And that's basically the start sequence to actually initiate this API call. So we've got our response, this is a response. And over in NAN, we've basically uh, written that script. It's pushed a message that says hello into here. So if we just scroll down, we have the message hello. And then we've come into the respond to webhook node and pushed out our response, which was, this is a response. And that's what we see over here. Okay, so let's actually add an AI step into here. Now, I'm not gonna be using the regular AI agent step. This is a little bit more difficult for us to reproduce in code because it uses a Langchain library underneath that. But a simpler one for us to reproduce is to use this OpenAI message a model. So this is like the chat completions API, which we can really easily find uh, in the OpenAI documentation. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna choose our uh, AI model. Let's go with 4.0 latest. I'm gonna feed in this response as our user prompt. And then for our assistant prompt, I'm just gonna say, respond to the message in a fun and bubbly way. And then just default best practice for NAN. I'm gonna make sure that the output of this assistant message is suitable for JSON. Now I'm doing that because I know we're gonna be taking this output and plugging it into this respond to webhook node. And since we're using JSON over here, I don't wanna have any special characters that might break the uh, string, which would basically just uh, make my webhook uh, response fail. So that's my best practice that I'm doing over here. If I just execute this right now, We'll get a response. Hey there, how can I brighten your day? Awesome, and now for our respond to webhook node, let's change this to expression. 
I'm gonna remove our default reply and plug in this dynamic reply from the assistant. So now when we respond back to our cursor API call, it's gonna say, hey there, or you know, whatever the generated message is, but it's gonna come from this AI assistant. So let's turn this back on and across in cursor, let's go node script. So we've basically sent hello to the assistant and we've got this response back. Hi there, uh, so excited to chat with you. So this is really cool. As you can see, this is a very quick and convenient way for you to test your NAN workflows. I wanted to show you this because actually this is one of the ways that I test my workflows when I have a webhook node, or if I actually need to use a node, one of the pre-configured nodes like let's say Slack, or if you wanna use ClickUp, uh, sometimes it's easier and faster to just, instead of using a ClickUp node and having to create a new task, which would trigger off your actual uh, trigger for your NAN workflow, you can create a webhook, and then you can just reproduce the same data structure that you would expect from ClickUp or Slack or whichever tool that you're using, and just send that automatically uh, into your NAN workflow. So this is a really good way to test out uh, third-party integrations. So at this stage, I'm actually happy with this. This is what we're gonna be reproducing in uh, Replit, so we can deploy it live. Now I'm gonna activate this workflow. Okay, got it. And let's take this webhook. Let's go to the production webhook. Let's just make sure that this works as well. So I don't need to go on execute because now that it's live, as long as I go into cursor and I just replace this with my production webhook, I'm gonna go node script and I should get a response back. Hey there, so great to see you. How can I sprinkle some magic on your day today? So that's awesome. We now have our production ready NAN workflow. So let's look at how to actually reproduce this in Replit. So in Replit, there's two ways that we can create this agent. The first way is to interact with the Replit agent. So this is like using bolt.new or lovable where you just like plain text prompting and then the assistant takes care of all the files, all the backend stuff, all the troubleshooting. Uh, it does it automatically for you. Uh, my preference, if you wanna just start learning how to do this kind of stuff, is just to get your hands a little bit dirty. So I'm gonna go across to Developer Frameworks and I'm gonna choose Node.js. So I always code in JavaScript, that's just my favorite uh, coding language. And especially for automation, you might be using JavaScript or Python, but if you wanna use JavaScript and deploy this as an agent or an app online, you have to use the Node.js framework. So Node.js is just like the kitchen that lets us run these recipes. So I'm gonna hit remix. I'm just gonna type in demo assistant. And now let's go and use the framework. So Replit in the back end is now gonna spool up an environment for us that's gonna be able to actually run some uh, JavaScript for us. And since we're deploying it on something like Node.js, we can do a lot of cool things here. One of the things that we can do is we can build in some nice security. We can also plug into databases. Uh, we can also deploy this live online, which is what we'll be doing later on. Uh, for this video, I'm just gonna keep things super simple. I'm just gonna show you the bare bones approach about how to do this start to finish because we need a way to actually have a webhook to receive events in Replit. We then wanna figure out the API call. It's gonna be processing whatever we're sending. And then we wanna be able to send a response back to that API call. So basically in the exact same way that I'm building out this API, I just wanna change this URL so it points across to Replit and we get a very similar response. We were able to interact with some uh, LLM step and just get a really cool funky response like this. So across in Replit, uh, we still get the ability to use AI to help us code. So just like in Cursor, how we could use plain English to prompt, and then we got the uh, set of instructions and a script, and then it was up to us to actually make a new file, copy and paste it into here. That's the exact same experience that we get over here by using the assistant. And just to remind us, this workflow has a webhook which receives some event from a third party. It then gets a message and it passes it through to an open AI LLM. And then after that, it takes that response from the LLM and then it responds back to that initiating API call with the response from the LLM. So to prompt up our assistant in Replit, I'm just gonna say, hey, I need a script that will one, have a webhook that receives some data from an external source, which is this thing over here. And I'm just saying that, hey, the data looks like this. We have a message as the key and we have some string as the message that we're sending across. And that's because we actually did that in our API call. So I know exactly that we're sending a message as the key and then we're gonna be sending hello or whatever string we want over here. And then I'm saying, hey, can you take this message that we receive and then plug it into an OpenAI chat completions? Now that API call looks something like this. Uh, I'm very familiar with the OpenAI API and that's why I know it's called chat completions. But if you're using Replit and you just say, hey, plug it into an OpenAI API call, it's also gonna know which API to use. And then I'm saying, hey, can you take whatever OpenAI says and then respond back to it into the invoking API call. 
So that just means, hey, take the response and actually just send it back so we can see it in cursor. And the cool thing is that since we're actually building out the structure of the response over here, I can just copy this and I can let the assistant know exactly how I want that response to look. So I'm just saying the JSON will look exactly like this, which is a response and then a string response. So let's hit enter and wait for the assistant to give us the instructions and the script. All right, awesome, so the assistant is done. Now the cool thing about Replit is that this assistant just makes it very easy for you to run those instructions. So I'm just gonna install the first dependency, which is Express and OpenAI. And now I'm gonna apply the second step, which is setting up the webhook server. Or I could have actually just gone to the very bottom and just clicked apply all and then click okay. And then that would have put all the changes through. All right, so that's really cool. So now on the right hand side, we have our script completely built out, which we didn't have to copy and paste. So that's awesome. We have the actual API call over here and we have GPT 3.5 turbo. So it's an older model. And this looks like it's probably ready to go. Okay, so let's hit run over here and that should actually turn on our workflow. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't actually turn anything on. So there is an error for us. So I'm just gonna go back to the assistant and just say there is an error and see if the assistant's able to spot that out for us. Now, I do know that if I go across to the console, I can actually see what error there is there. And basically this is saying that I am missing the OpenAI API key. So if we do wanna use this OpenAI step, uh, as we know, we actually have to have some kind of credentials. So like the API key installed. And we didn't do that step with our Replit assistant. So um, over here, we actually have the instructions now. So I can see the error your webhook server is failing because the OpenAI API key is in here. So I'm just gonna follow the instructions over here. And it's telling me to add a secret. So I'm gonna go add a new secret. And it's saying to add this. Let's paste it into here. And then across in my OpenAI account, I'm just gonna generate a new API key. Let's create the secret. Let's paste that into here and add secret. So now when I run this, it should actually work. Awesome, so now our workflow is in that local testing mode, which is the same thing over here. If we click on execute workflow, it's not actually published live, but it can receive events so we can test this out. And now our final instructions are that, hey, if you wanna send an API call to here, you just need to send it to this specific endpoint, which ends in forward slash webhook and make sure your JSON contains a message field, which our API call is already doing. So now for us to get the actual URL of this, we just have to click on this button over here. I'm gonna copy this. And just a reminder that it has to be forward slash webhook at the very end. Let's paste this into here and let's go forward slash and webhook. So now if I run node script, let's see if this works. Awesome, so we have a successful response, which says response, hello, how can I assist you today? So that test was the exact same thing as what we did at the very start of this video, where we had our test URL and we just deployed it locally. So one of the things that we did here, we had a very basic prompt that says to respond to the message in a fun and bubbly way. So I'm gonna go back to Replit and say, can you make our assistant respond back in a fun and bubbly way? And can you also make the assistant use chat GPT-4? So as you see, I don't actually have to go into the code and manually try and find uh, this specific model and change the model or to try and add an additional prompt over here. I can just tell the assistant directly and it's gonna be able to make those changes for me. So as usual, it's gonna figure out the changes that it needs to run and then it's gonna give me the option to automatically apply that to the actual script. So there we go, the changes were made. I can actually click into here to review the different changes. So here's the actual updated instructions. You're a fun, bubbly, enthusiastic assistant. So it actually made a very nice prompt for us and it's changing to GPT-4. So all I need to do is just click apply. And now the assistant's gonna take that, it's gonna make the changes and restart our testing environment. If I go back into here and write node script, we should get a more fun and bubbly response. There we go, hello there, nice emojis. It's absolutely amazing today and a bunch of different emojis. So that's really, really cool. So at this stage, now I wanna activate my workflow in Replit. So to do that, we're just gonna go across to this deploy button and I'm gonna follow the default instructions of how to deploy over here. I'm just gonna go set up deployment, approve and configure, and then scroll to the very bottom and then deploy as well. Now this is my preference when I'm first building out automations and apps and scripts, uh, because I just use a default setting. And then as I do some more testing while it's in the live environment, if I find that I need some more performance, I can just come back into here and then redeploy it with the upgraded performance. And there we go. So now the app is fully deployed. It took about three minutes and now it's active and ready to go. So all we need to do is just take this live URL, just like in NAN, when we wanna go from the test URL to the production, we have to just get the updated URL. Come here into cursor. Let's just change this URL, remove all that, paste this into here. Make sure we have the forward slash webhook like normal 
And let's just test this out, node script. And there we go, we have a response from our live deployed Repler agent. So I personally think that Repler is such a great tool because as you see, we just use plain English prompting and we're able to build out an entire app. All the changes over here, we could just do by a click of a button. Deploying it was very simple. Repler also plugs into databases. It can do user authentication. So not only can you run automations on here and websites and apps, but Repler can also host NAN for you. So it's such a versatile tool for you to build pretty much anything that you want and then publish it online. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna put all the resources in my school community. And if you are interested in seeing a more sophisticated workflow be converted into code and then deployed on Repler, I'm gonna have a follow-up video in my community as well. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.